Welcome to Ella's Beef Easter's Radio Air Check and Classic TV Channel. Real Radio 104.1. Take it like a man. You better get gay or I'll make you gay. Real Radio 104.1. WTKS, Coco Beach, Orlando. From across the Redneck Riviera, see to the Everglades. And sometimes when the weather is right, picked up by the crappy short waves on the raft, seeing Cuban refugees in the Atlantic. Rio Radio, 104.1. Rio! Radio! 104.1. Cultural Literacy Day continues on the Phillips Farm. Moira's got the day off. Give me one more, then we'll get back to the calls. Have you got one? What book did the slogan... No, let's do... Ken points one out. What, what book did the throw. slogan, Big Brother Watch You? That's from uh, George Orwell. Yeah, 1984. That was, even I know that. That's too easy. Okay. Well, all right. Let me find you another one. Okay. Okay. Who are the Mena Menites? Menites. M E Mennonites. Mennonites. Yeah. The Mennonites are a religious sect associated with the Quakers, <laughs> no. Pentecostals, Protestants. Presbyterians, Protestants. Protestants. Yes. Good job, Jim. Who <laughs> right under the buzzer? Okay. Very good. <laughs> All right. Moving right along. Here's some more religion. Hello, Pam. You're on Real Radio. Um, yeah, I'd like to um, clear up uh, um, what the Immaculate Conception is. Yeah, please, quick. Okay, um, the Immaculate Conception was when Elizabeth, Mary's mother, conceived her without any sin. And she was pre-chosen by God wow. to be the mother of Jesus. Okay, well, thank you. Uh -huh. Appreciate it. Let's re try to remember that, all right? It'll come up this time uh, next okay. year. It's the, me uh, the Amazing Bob on his uh, cell phone. Hello there, Jim. Hello, uh, Amazing Bob. I am channeling Johnny Armstrong right now. If you have any questions, now would be the time to ask them, and I can throw you the answers. Okay, I know uh, if you want to. I need to warn you up front. Sometimes the channel ain't too clear, and i would be running a little bit left or right. <laughs> so just deal with it, okay? Uh, I'll, I'll do my best. All right, so you're channeling Johnny Armstrong, the hostage taker right. down in South Orlando. Here comes one right now. Okay. Holy mackerel. I say quit sending rubbish in here for me and the babies to eat because we just covered with baby poop. Okay, well, how are the... Show it on baby poop and diapers. Now, see, now, it wasn't a bad bet when he first started yeah, off, that... and then it was like... <laughs> Way downhill. Okay. It went... Try that again tomorrow there, Amazing Bob. It is uh, 512 on Real Radio. One line is open, 916-1041. Long distance, one triple eight. Nine seven eight one zero oh, four one. Hello, Margaret. Go ahead. Hello, Jim. Hi. Uh, I just wanted to comment uh, about the gentleman that said the basketball player should have just had lost his job and you know had his contract torn up and been able to go to work for another team the next day. I think that would um, put out the picture to other pro basketball players that if I don't think I'm making enough money and I want to go to another team, all I got to do is choke my coach. So I think well, how about well, how about you know suspend him? Horace Grant thinks that he should have been suspended. Latrell Sprewell should have been suspended, maybe for ten or twenty games. But anything over that, he believes that the punishment is too severe, too um, hard on him. I, I like Horace Grant, but I disagree with him. I, I think at least six months. I, I personally, I think he should have gone to jail. Yeah, but you know, if you choke your boss. Your boss or someone in your company is going to fire you, but you are not prevented from going to work with, you know, a competitor the next day. That, that's exactly right. I'm not prevented from going to work from uh, with another with a competitor the next day, except that if I choked my boss, he'd have me arrested. And uh, bosses talk to each other from company to company. I'd I'd have a harder time finding a job. But they're not allowed to yeah, do the that. interview process. Oh, no, they're but, not allowed to. Yeah, you know. you know when I when you come looking for work with me, I'm not allowed to call your former boss and say, Hey, by the way, tell me, did Margaret ever choke you, or <laughs> you know, <laughs> did she ever choke one of her coworkers? You're not well, allowed to ask those license. questions. Pardon me? No, you are. No, it is illegal to ask those questions. I think you ought to be allowed to ask those questions. 
Well, I think I think you ought to be uh, I think you ought to be allowed to ask the person's age and if they're married and if they plan on starting a family and if they've ever choked the boss, if they've ever stolen any money, were they ever late for work? You can't ask any of those questions. No, it's illegal to ask any of those questions. That's why we have bums working for us. It, well, it's true. You could because. There was a time in this country you could ask those questions. Of course, it led to a lot of discrimination, I guess, and a lot of good people not winning the jobs that they deserve. But be that as it may, see what we have now. Now we got bumps because we're not allowed to ask those questions. Chokers. Where'd you work before? Well, I worked at the Acme Company. Okay, well, I think I'll call them to see if you were ever late for work. Oh, you can't do that. No. No, I can't. Uh... Hi, Jim Phillips here. Got an applicant here in, uh, in my office by the name of Otto. Uh, I would just like to know, uh, you know, was Otto ever late for work at your place? Well, I can't answer that question. That's well, a legitimate question. I, I, I think it that. is a legitimate question. I don't think you're allowed to ask that. Was he ever late no, for work? Not. Was he a slanker? I think you can only ask. Was did, he a bum? Did he, you know, did he work there from X date to X yeah. date? Right. And was he making this salary? I don't even think that you can ask. Well, what was the salary he was making? You can only confirm. You can only get like yes or no answers from them. Oh, like uh, Otto says on this on our application form that he was making um, four and a half dollars an hour. Can you confirm that? Are you allowed to ask that? I think so. And then they say yes or no. You know, did he work here from X date? To, yes. Was he a good worker? I can't answer that. Did question. he have a good attitude? Are you allowed to ask that? I don't think you can. You can't even ask them what kind of attitude you know a handful of questions that you could ask. See, that's, you know, I got a problem with that. If, I'm a, if I own a company, I work my ass off over the years. I save my money. I try my best. I put it all together. Eventually, I start my own company. I start hiring people. And I can't ask about their, well, you know, look. I'm I'm still trying to make this company a success. I don't want it to go downhill. Mm -hmm. I want to know about these people who are coming to me looking for work. Is he a bum? Did he fight with his coworkers? Hey, is he is he a booze hound? <laughs> Even if you don't know, do you think he was a booze hound? Did he and, do drugs? You know the question. Or do you think he did drugs? They have the question. You know, where was your last job? And then it says reason for living. Right. And you know, people sometimes write instead of being fired, they write in there, you know, like uh, personal differences or something like that. You should yeah. be able to ask why you got fired or why you left. You should be able to call the other boss and ask them why they got fired. Policy differences with management. Yeah, that's always a good right, one. Right. Mm -hmm. That means they hated your guts and you were stupid. <laughs> Hello, John. You're on Real Radio. Hey, Jim. Hi. How you doing today? Okay, not bad. Good. Um, I was at an auto parts store on Saturday picking up a fan belt. Yeah, and fan belt. The guy's, the guy's asking me, uh, you know, what year a truck it's from and this, that, and the other thing. Right. All of a sudden, the phone rings. So all, I'm standing there, dumbfounded. The guy starts jacking on the phone, asking the other guy on the telephone, uh, you know, what year truck is it, what year that is it, you know, how big is the engine? I said to the guy, I start basically yelling at the guy. It's like, hey. You hey, you were live, there first. He you should have. Put... Live, you got a live human being. Correct. And you know, you're going to take care of someone on the telephone when you got a live human being standing here wanting to buy something from you. Yeah, you did the right thing. Ah, I just lost it. Well, I don't I blame wondered, you. I can't. St have... I can't stand that when that happens. What you do? You're supposed to pick up the phone and say, "Hold on, I'll be right with you. I have a customer at the desk. Let right. me take care of him, and I'll be right back with you." And put uh, him on just, hold. I felt like jumping over the counter and hitting the hold button. Well, you know what? <laughs> so what did the guy say when you yelled at him? Another uh, guy came from the back area and helped me out and yeah. kept on on the telephone. But, I mean, just there's people in business that are just stupid. You know, rudeness runs rampant. Yeah, exactly. And it burns me up. When I walk into a store and somebody's on the phone, they don't, uh, you know, even cup the phone and say, I'll be right with you with a customer, but please, sir, look around. I'll be right with you. That's exactly. fine and dandy. I can deal with that. No problem. Exactly. Yeah. Me too. Okay. Thanks for hearing yeah. me. All right. You got it. What do you say? What? Thanks for hearing me. I mean, the International Losers Club has uh, issued its annual list of the year's top ten losers. Can you guys... Is this in the book of cultural literacy? Yes. No. Can you guess who the number one loser, you, of 1997 <laughs> is? No, I came in... Let me see Thank if I can come up with some names. O.J., Marv Albert. Well, Not yes bad. or no? Well, O.J. Okay, is number know. one. We've got ten names, right? Marv is on the list. How many females? Yes. Uh, looks like one. One loser? Princess Diana. 
<laughs> she lost already. <laughs> she, she lost, lost it all. No, she's not on it. Roseanne. But OJ's number one, Marva's number three. Roseanne is not on here. Loser. <clears throat> Give us a hint. Uh, one we've been talking about today. Charles Barkley. No. He just made it. I don't know when this list was compiled, but he's well, free yes. well. Is he? Number eight. I don't know I mean I don't know when the, when wow. they did this, but he's on okay. it. Okay. We got three now. Yep. Well Charles number eight. O. J. number one and Marv number three. Who's number one? Tell us because we're not gonna oh, do OJ. this anymore. OJ's number one. Yeah, it's one to run down the list. Who's number two? Mike Tyson. All right. Biting the ear off. Correct. <laughs> number three was Marv. Mm. Chewy. Number like four. Chicken. Hint. I'll give you a quote by the number four. I'm gone. Give. Correct. Give. <laughs> Give. You're too. Give. I'm gone. You number five is our only female. I'm gone. I never did get. I'm, I'm <laughs> gone. Oh, no. That was the transcript from the video. I know. I'm gone. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, yeah, baby. I'm breasts. gone. I'm gone. Does that mean he's finished? Like he premature? I have no idea. Number five was Jenny. Six, Unabomber. Seven, Barry Sheck. Jenny. McCarthy. What did I say? Oh. Jenny. Nine, Bob Saget. And what? Jenny McCarthy's on there? Yeah, number five. The only female. Representing. She's a loser. Why is she a loser? I mean, she's not a very good actress at all. She got a new TV show on NBC. I would think that would be good for her. I don't understand why she would be no, on the loser's sucks. list. She's a ditz. Well, she's a bimbo. She can't be that much of a ditz if I mean, just, she got her own TV show. She didn't. What she do to put? I mean, I can Took understand a Tyson off. and Latrell Sprewell, and now it doesn't really make sense because she's winning. She got a fat paycheck, and she's got a show on NBC. That's an awful Prime show. Time. That's yeah. a terrible show. She's awful. She got her moment of well, fame. It's that's all why over. She's with. a loser. How oh, was that? It? Okay. Hello, Ted. You're on Real Radio. Hey, Jim. How you doing? We're doing all right. Hanging in there for a cloudy, lousy weather-wise Thursday. Unbelievable. Jeez. Um, so stay with us, too. The thing is on TV. Is it? And it looks like what's happened so far, he's been up about 55 hours with no sleep Oof. whatsoever. Wow. His family is constantly pleading with him to come out. His sisters want him to come out. They've been crying. Or right. All on the news. Yeah, I've seen him. However, he is taking very good care of the children. That's they good. say that. He's feeding them. He's playing with them. Um, he said uh, on the radio just now, a few minutes ago, on the Channel 9, that supposedly when it gets dark, he's going to come out and give the kids up. But he has made mention several times all day long that he is going to take his life. So that's what they're hoping to prevent, obviously. Well, how can they do that? Well, they're negotiating Shoot by saying, you know, let's get the kids out safely. And, you know, we could talk about these things. You know, that's the normal the way the media tries to handle things and negotiate us want to do things without any violence of any kind. I think they need to back off. I think they need to back way off. I think this guy is scared to death. We're not excusing his actions by any means. Exactly. I mean, he's wanted they're on a saying, murder charge. He's, 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 he's been up 55 hours. I think he's got to wear down eventually. Well, I think, they, I think he ought to be able to see for himself that the SWAT team is moving back, that the, the news media is being ordered away, you know, and maybe he'll settle down a little. I think he's scared to death that he's going to walk out the door and get shot to death. I think that's exactly right. You're exactly right. You know, it's it is a circus. You're I mean, right. I understand that. Well, I understand these things that. happening and, and and the dynamics that take place. But at the same time, I think maybe uh, they ought to try that tactic and say, "Look, John, we're pulling way back here. We want a peaceful resolution to this. Send the children out and uh, and then come out with your hands up." Yep, that's and it. Nab them. All okay, right, you got it. Where's he going to go? What's he going to do? He knows then. Well. Well, then why he would he he's say not... he's going to kill himself? If he's afraid of getting shot, why would he say he's going to kill himself? Why, why would he make the police believe he would shoot himself if he was afraid of being shot? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> You're a negotiator. You should know these things. Only for two days. That wasn't a good job. I choked the chief. <laughs> Did you? Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. He was yelling at me. <laughs> he deserved it. I don't know. Trying to negotiate the surrender of a suspect, and the chief was yelling at him. Had to choke him. You know, there was no peaceful resolution. That's sunny. You know, I, could, I couldn't reason with him. I just lost control. I just grabbed him. Don't you understand? I'm trying to negotiate a peaceful end here, you stupid jackass. <laughs> no, I lost control. Gasped me. 523 on uh, Real Radio 104.1. Uh, Matt, your turn. 
Hey, how you doing? Um, I got three more uh, hockey players, black hockey players. There's Donald Brashear for the Canucks. Mm -hmm. Black There's Grant, Grant Pure for the Oilers, and mm -hmm. he won a, a few Stanley Cups in the 80s. John Wayne Bretzky and uh, Mark That's Henry the and all them. And Mark then Mark there's Garcia. Jerome and Nigla. He plays for the Calgary Flames. Nigla? Jerome the Dome because, uh, you know, all them types have uh, big dome heads. <laughs> What are you saying? <laughs> Jerome the Dome. Is that a high dome reference? I have no idea. Sorry. Black hockey players, that's all I want to hear about that, all right? I just want to know if they look black. Yeah. Well, I'm, well wait a minute, let me retract that statement. That's uh -huh. really stupid. I want to know if they look like... Leon Spinks on skates. Leon Spinks, or whether they look like, you know, I, never mind. Give me another question. You ready? I am ready. We don't have one right now. Oh, come on. There's three of the you in there. Now. We're right behind anyway. Right. I can give you a state capital. I don't want a state capital. Mm. I don't want that at all. Central American capital? Sure. Okay. Nicaragua. And it rhymes with Nicaragua. But Managua. Not, yes. I was in Managua in really? 1972, as a matter of fact. Peace Corps? No. Maybe see. I was there following the earthquake in Managua. As a matter of fact, I drove around the streets of Managua with the nephew of General Anastasio Somoza with a machine gun on my mind. Really? Because he had no place to put it. So he put it on your lap? Yeah, uh, he certainly did. Did he put the safety on? I have no idea. I didn't put my, hand, I didn't put my finger on the trigger. That is a true story. That, no, that is a true story. Really? Are your monthly payments taking on a life of their own? Yeah, they are. Bills and bills and more bills, they're adding up. You don't know what to do. Well, there is a way to cut, cut those monthly payments in half. What you could do is combine your debt consolidation into one money-saving loan. You could combine, uh, could combine debt consolidation and home improvement into one money-saving loan if you want to. I'm talking about a loan from First Plus. It could save you hundreds of dollars a month, and that's money for you to save and spend, invest, whatever you would like to do with that money. First Plus does not require the equity that most lenders do. In fact, they'll loan you up to 125% of the value of your home, so you can qualify for the loan even if you have little or no equity. Stop by or call anytime during business hours, 875-1985, or toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-510-PLUS. There's no fee to apply. You'll get an answer in minutes. Take control of your monthly budget with a loan from First Plus. Real Radio 104.1. It's not the size of your Yule log that counts. Where do you think you're going to put a tree that big? It's how you use it. Send it over and I'll show you. Happy Holidays from the Howard Stern Station. Real Radio 104.1. At Checkers, everything is made fresh when you order it. We won't even make a radio commercial until a customer tells us. Give me a commercial for the new Double DeVille and make it a car commercial. Okay, and would you like to star in this commercial? Well, okay. Well, my old burger had stopped turning heads. But then I heard about the new Checkers Double DeVille, so I went in. And the manager took time to explain the Double DeVille standard features. Julie was surprised that the Double DeVille comes fully loaded with two quarter pound beef patties, double cheese, pickles, and special sauce, plus fresh tomato, lettuce, and red onion slices. Maybe she thought this was some stripped down burger. The price was clearly marked, and they didn't try to force me into paying more for a lot of options I really didn't need, like avocado slices. And when I left Checkers, I felt like I had a pretty good deal. Everyone, this is Julie's first Double DeVille. I'll be back, like the next time I'm hungry. Checkers, fresh because we just made it. The new Checkers Double DeVille goes great with fries and a large Coke, but you already knew that, didn't you? Thanks for tuning in to Gift Line, brought to you by the Florida Lottery. Now, today we're tackling the age-old question, what makes the perfect holiday gift? Our in-studio guest, the guru of gift-giving himself, Mr. Santa Claus. Welcome. Oh, hello. Let's get right to the phones. And from St. Pete. Hi, Santa. I need to buy a gift for this guy in my office, and I barely know. What do I do? I find the perfect gift to be Florida Lottery Instant Games. For 50 cents, there's happy holidays with a $25 top prize. For a dollar, there's holiday treasures with a $1,000 top prize. And for $2, there's holiday cash with a $10,000 top prize. Thanks, Anna. 
Line five, Bob from the Keys. You're on with the hardest working man in the gift business. Hi, Santa. My wife complains that everything I get her is too big, too small, too red, too pink, or too something. Oh, oh. Any idea? Well, Bob, what about Florida Lottery Instant Games? With a chance to win $10,000 instantly, she'll be ecstatic. And as for color, how could she not like all that green? Oh, oh, oh. All right. That's why they call him the Prime Minister of Presents. Holiday Instant Games from the Florida Lottery. Our phone operators standing by with their thumbs up their asses waiting for you to call. 916-1041-888-978-1041. Real Radio 104.1. Johnny's Chartered Planes, this is Johnny. Hi, I need to charter a plane, hook a giant roll of wrapping paper to the back, and fly all over the south. Excuse me? Okay, this holiday I bought my wife a cellular phone from Bell South Mobility, so I'm wrapping up their entire coverage area. You are? Yes, and it's the largest coverage area in the southeast, so her phone will work wherever she goes. Of course, it's taking a little longer than I thought. <laughs> I'll bet. So I figured, zoom, we zip around in that plane and be done in no time. What do you say, pal? I really need your help. Oh, you need help, all right. Wrapping Bell South Mobility's coverage area is hard, but giving it is easy. With our holiday package, get 250 minutes of airtime for only $45 a month or choose from our many holiday clear and simple plans. We could even rig up a huge tape dispenser and... Hello? Bell South Mobility, featuring the Motorola StarTech cellular phones. So small, so light, it's always with you. Call 1-800-243-3000. Limited time offers, certain restrictions and or connection fees may apply. Bell South Mobility. Count on it. Real Radio 104.1 Fast Traffic. Back on Pine Hills, it's about a mile south of Clerk on Ocoee. This report would be brought to you by General Nutrition Centers. Fourth, six and a half mile east of I-4, a wreck, one Center Garden, Vineland, and West Lake Butler. I-4 eastbound, a mile delay into five entry, five minutes slow from Colonial to Lee Road, then into Fort Z State Road Centers, Ginseng, St. John's Wart, Ginkgo, Biloba, and much more. Ask your GNC sales associate today and save big. I'm Cody James on your only FM source. 24-hour traffic, Real Radio 104.1. Real Radio. Don't you just love this weather? Don't you just want to put a gun barrel up to your head and squeeze off around? I mean, that this another day or two of this, and it's this is so opposite. You can you combine this kind of weather and holiday shopping, and it's not a pretty picture. As long as you're not driving, if you're like here looking out the window, it's, I it's stand, here. Oh. I cannot stand it. Every once in a while, a day or two maybe of this is fine. But uh, now they say through the weekend, maybe into Tuesday, it'll be raining. Good. Wonderful. Let it pour, let it pour, let it pour. Magic Captain, Orlando Magic Captain Horace Grant was one Magic player who believes the NBA was too harsh in dealing with Golden State guard Latrell Sprewell last week. You know the story. Latrell Sprewell assaulted his coach, choked him, came back after choking him for 15 uh, seconds, came back after about 15 minutes. 15 seconds is a long time. I know. Was it? Or 8 seconds. It was something like that. I think like it was that. 15 seconds. I mean, what was everybody doing? <laughs> Maybe you yeah. thought he was choking on Maybe he's doing like a Heimlich. I am not advocating the choking of your boss. But certainly, Otto, if you saw me choking <laughs> the program director, you you know, or I think most people would intervene. I mean, they'd try to separate the two. This program director? Anyway. So, uh, 15 seconds, uh, Sprewell choked his coach. Anyway, he was suspended for a year. And his contract was revoked. And that could cost him about $20, mil, uh, $20 million. Uh, Horace, who's the captain of the Orlando Magic, says uh, physical action should never have happened. I don't condone that at all. But Horace Grant all went, went on to say, but to ban him for a year to take his livelihood completely away, that probably was too harsh. Horace says suspend him for 10 or 20 games or whatever. Give him a severe punishment, but I think they were too hard on him. Agree or disagree? Put him in jail. I don't know, maybe, you know. They can kill him. Is that, is that a, that's assault and battery. And did he come back and threaten to kill him with the two by four? I don't know what he, I don't know if he threatened to kill him with a two by four. I think he came back with a two by four, but I don't know if he came back and said anything. There's got to be some kind of mandatory uh, sentence for assault and battery, at least. He got he fucked out that he didn't get to jail. Although it 
probably a better trade. Twenty million dollars versus like what thirty days in jail. <laughs> All right. I'd rather spend the time in jail. I think. All right. You know, I mean, he can go work for somebody else. It's not like his livelihood was taken away. He can do something else with his life. He can even play ball someplace else. They'll pay him in Europe. I'm sure their teams in Hungary or someplace like that will pay you know, a couple hundred dollars a week for him to play. 533 on uh, Real Radio, 104.1. Hello, John. Go ahead. Hey, Jim. How you doing? We're doing okay. Love your show, man. Thanks. I love all you guys. You're great. It's Appreciate great it. To call in. Good for you. Hey, I want to call about a Latrell Sprewell. Yeah, what do you think? I'm a, I'm a big, big basketball fan. I'm originally a Hoosier. from I'm from Indiana. And yep. Huge basketball fan. Great. And, you know, I've always defended the players, even even when my wife is like, you're crazy, you can't be defending this guy. Latrell, what Latrell Sprewell did was insane, and he should be banned from the NBA. But what Barkley and all the other guys are doing are really making me the big fan, really upsetting me about this. And I, I'm ready to I'm to the point where I can stick with just my college basketball where they never do this to their coach. And if so, nobody would ever stand for it. Yeah, what they're saying is the NBA, NBA I suppose, now has a big public relations problem. Because they've been putting up with this nonsense for long, uh, for so long. I mean, players are beating up their girlfriends and exactly. doing drugs. And this, and, I mean, it comes back to the old role model thing. Exactly, exactly. They say they don't want to be role models, but well, I don't think they should be role. Well, maybe they should. I mean, if they're selling their, t if they're out there saying I want kids to buy my T-shirts and I want kids to buy my posters and I want kids to buy this and that, then I'd maybe they have to say to themselves, Yeah, I am a role model. Charles Barkley does not believe that, and I tend to agree with him. I don't think they should be role models or seen as role models any more than. Joe, the bartender down the street, exactly. should be seen as a role model. They're basketball players, that's all. Hey, well, they're up to the fans. They're losing me, that's for sure. Okay, thanks. Oh, See Thank you. you. Bye. Magic beat the uh, Bulls last night. It's not. doesn't mean what it used to, though. But it's still a feat. Still good for them. They're playing without uh, Penny, and they're playing without... Nick. Nick. He's got a broken hand. And who else? Uh, Strong. Yeah, I mean, jeez. Doing all right, I guess. Got a question for you. Yeah. All sure. Right. My pleasure. An empire developed by Turks between the 14th and That's 20th. That's the Ottoman, Ottoman Empire. I was going to see it. <laughs> Just trying to relate that to the program. Very good. All right, here's another one. You're sure. I'm ready for cultural literacy. Name the place in West Virginia where the militant abolitionist John Brown... Was oh, Harper's Ferry. Oh, yes. No, Harper's Ferry. Not Ferry. Did you say Harper's Ferry? No, he said Ferry. That's right. What were you going to say? Harper's Bazaar? No, I thought you <laughs> said Harper's Bay. I said Harper's Ferry. Okay. Harper Valley PTA. He was a crazy guy. That guy was loony. He was cool. He wasn't cool. He was, well, he was not like cool was, about. No, he was cool because like, he was loony. He probably like, was a cool guy to hang he around with. murderer is what he was. But anyway, want to give me number three? Ready, Brian? Okay, here we go. Yes, sir. Name the frequently recurring bit of melody, usually in opera, associated with a person, thing, or emotion in the opera. A what now? Is a frequently recurring bit of melody, usually in opera. Like an aria? No. <laughs> like a... Like when, a, like when a guy comes out, they'll play a little melody, and then he might disappear, and then later on he'll come out again for the opera and play the same kind of thing. Would we know this? I mean, is it? Have you heard you of this? You should know it. I've heard of it, but I took opera in school, so. Brian Brogé. All right, I'll give you a hint. It's German. Wow. Gee, for German. leading theme. Lichtenstein. Panzer. No. <sighs> Don't know. Give up. Lay it motif. I haven't. Well, eh, wouldn't know. Sorry. Don't know. <laughs> Skip that chat. I thought you knew opera stuff. Huh? I, no, we're big I on opera. I like I I like opera, but I'm not an aficionado to the point where I know all those terms. <laughs> That's a stupid question. <laughs> Hello, Harry. You're on Real Radio. Hey, Jim. Yeah. It's just 88 and sunny out here. I'm you know? telling you, geez, man alive. This is depressing. I'm telling you. i got a nice piece of culture question for you. Yep. American culture. Oh, all sure. American culture. All right, listen up, boys. Here it comes. Okay. And Brian's got all the answers in his pockets, so don't twist them out of him. All right. In baseball, there's eight ways to get to first base. Name them. 
Eight ways to get, well, you can get hit, you can walk, you can single. Oh, a hit is a single. All right, walk, single, all right, a walk, a hit. All right, you can get a hit. You can take a walk. You can get yes, hit by the hit, ball. Right. All right, yeah, you can go. Well, hold yeah, on. No, no, it's raining really bad. All right. I'm going to listen on the All right, drive carefully. Right. You can go to first base if on the third strike the catcher drops the ball. You can go to first. That's what, three, four? That's four. You can get a hit, be hit, walk, and if the catcher drops the ball. All right, there's four. And there are four more ways? That's what he said. Now, is it a trick question? No. I can get to first if you hit a double? Nope. <laughs> I'm just asking. So I think it's a trick question. No, it's not. You could be a designated runner. Yes. Yes. Well, that's not. That counts as one. You're at for pinch if runner. Brian's, if me and Brian are on the team and Brian's up at bat, Brian hits it, but I run to first. That's good. That's like one of the most difficult ones. One. i do that one more time. If Tell me, me and Brian are on the You can have a designated runner. Yeah, like say he's a pitcher. I was a pitcher. He hits the first base. I'm like, okay, well, let's get a runner out there. Because right, and I run. switch. So they send the guy. So they send me in. I'm sitting in the. They send you out of the dugout to the first base, and yeah. you're the runner. You still got the first base. Right. Well, yeah, but that uh, that well, begs the question. I mean, that's, that's not. Pr no, that's got to be no. one of the answers. It is one of them. He gave it to. He gave me the answers. That's one. That's five. One, two, three, four, five. Correct. One of them I don't get. That's one I'm not really sure what it is. I right, give us the rest of them. <laughs> Catcher interference. Fielder's choice, which I've no term. Catcher interference. I don't know. He just—I didn't give any explanations. Just gave me them. Fielder's choice. I don't rem remember what that is. Catcher interference. That's I guess mm -hmm. if you're just getting the baseline, and the guy can't run to first. Right. I guess the umpire yeah. could say, "Take a base." Error, which I don't. You know, I was an umpire. <laughs> Collegiate though, I never right. made it. No, I wasn't big and fat enough. What? Error. And fielder's choice. Okay, error. All right, I'll buy it now. What's fielder's choice? Oh, I know what it is. What? It's when, like, say, um, there's a guy on first running the second, and you have two, you have only one out left to go, and you could either throw it to first or second to get him out. But it's still just a regular single. It's a hit. Yeah, I don't know, but he said that's well. Holy cow! It's a hit. It's bad day here in Chicago. Oh, it's a home run. But anyway, tomorrow, kids get in uh, free with the perch. Hello, Bill. You're on Real Radio. Yes, Jim. How are you? Okay. Slow uh, today. You know, just weird today. Too much rain. Interesting story that uh, Otto may be able to uh, relate to. I recently uh, lost my wallet in uh, Pine Hills, and uh, two days later, I'd already replaced my credit cards, my driver's license, and an individual walked in my branch, and it was a uh, branch manager for a very large bank locally, mm -hmm. <laughs> and... Uh, Basically, the um, I asked him if I could offer him a reward, anything like that. All right, hold on just a minute, Bill. We'll let you finish the story, but we want to let you know you are the... You did say the magic word. You're the recipient of what, Brian? Uh, he won gift certificates to uh, the Krabba's Italian Grill, where he can taste the thrill of the grill. It's a $35 value. Dinner for two. Uh, valid for lunch or dinner. All right. Congratulations, Bill. Good job. You said the magic word, which is reward. I never win anything, Jim. You did today. Today's right. your lucky day. This is this is all fabricated. It can't be true. It is true. I'm telling you, you said the magic word. The magic word is reward. You said it. You win that. Now tell us the rest of the story. Ah. Uh, it's kind of it's going to take away some of the steam, but anyway, the, uh, the individual uh, I asked him if I could give him you know money, um, anything like that, and he said no. He said he just would like to go out to lunch. Yeah. And so we did, and it turned out to be a little bit what I didn't anticipate. What did he do? Grab your ass or something? Well, he uh, actually he did. He did touch me, and so uh, I ate real quick. <laughs> <laughs> and I uh, paid the tab and uh, prayed he'd never see me again. So it's just interesting. I think I was right. Just well, what did he do? See your face on your driver's license? Say, man, I really had to meet this guy. Yeah, well, it was strange, and I, I swear I, to this day I can never tell my wife. So it was, uh, it was interesting, but it's just something I, I guess well, in that type of situation, sometimes it's just a, it's better to let well, where, go. I, where did he grab you? <laughs> you don't want to know. Yes, and we do, of, of back, course. Did he bag you? No, it was just it was kind of. Uh, Did he give you like a like a brush on the thigh or something? Actually, he grabbed. No, he didn't. It was just. Uh, it was kind of just kind of like putting his hand on my leg and then 
it stayed there through a portion of the entree, and I thought maybe. What do you mean stay there? You allowed it to stay there? Well, I didn't. Add, you should have stabbed it with a fork. <laughs> exactly. So it was a uh, different interest. It was uh, interesting. I learned my lesson, and I've uh, I'm reaffirmed that I am uh, heterosexual. Okay, hold on just a minute. Thanks. All right, hold on, because you're the lucky winner of the uh, secret word. Talk to him, Brian. Give him his uh, Carabba gift certificates. It is uh, 543 on Real Radio 104.1. Hey, please don't forget Goldsmith and Jewelry Shop. It's that time of year you're shopping for jewelry, shopping for earrings or watches or a tennis bracelet. Maybe you're looking for a diamond. You're going to propose marriage. Whatever the case might be, you can drive to the mall. I know you're going to do that anyway. Go to the jewelry stores, look around, check the prices. Then all you do, once you finish the rest of your shopping at the mall, forget the jewelry stores, you drive over to Goldsmith and Jewelry Shop. Number one, you're going to find a, yourself a parking space, and it's not going to take you forever to get that parking space. And you're going to find everything that you could ever want when it comes to jewelry. They have a large selection of diamonds, diamond engagement rings, tennis bracelets, watches, necklaces, all that kind of stuff. And the staff at Goldsmith and Jewelry Shop, fully trained by the Gemological Institute, of America. Let me just say you always get the best from the professionals at Goldsmith and Jewelry Shop. They're nice, they're courteous, and they just treat you so well. I shop all the time at Goldsmith and Jewelry Shop. I've told you before, I'm going to tell you again, this is where I found the diamond for Catherine's engagement ring. And we were so impressed with the service that we got at Goldsmith and Jewelry Shop. We went back there. We had our wedding bands designed and made right on the premises. At Goldsmith and Jewelry Shop, the prices are the best anywhere. Trust all of your jewelry needs to Goldsmith and Jewelry Shop, one mile west of I-4 on Lee Road. Real Radio 104.1. Scratch and sniff. That's just wrong. Hey, this is Russ and Bo for Thurston's Used Cars. you got to have a ride when you're living in Central Florida. Yeah, man. Places to go, people to see. Everybody needs a good, dependable vehicle. And that's why we send all of our friends to Thurston's Used Cars. Rich and Ron Thurston, they can get just about anybody into a quality, late-model used car. Thurston's is always looking out for the good ones. And if they don't have what you're looking for, they'll find it for you. Just stop by Thurston's or give them a call at 339-0080. And if you happen to have a few credit problems, don't worry about it. Poke your head in the door at Thurston's. They're not mad at you for sure, and most of the time, they can get anybody into a quality used car. So, forget about the bad credit and stop in and visit Thurston's Used Car. Hey, say you got good credit. You can save hundreds, even thousands, at Thurston's with their great used car prices. Thurston's Used Cars has specialized in getting people into quality late model used cars, good-looking, dependable cars with low mileage. That's Thurston's Used Cars on 1792, just north of the Maitland Overpass, right next door to the little 500 go-kart track. Give our buddies a call at... 339-0080. Roll on through. There's so much light to do. Roll on through. See your own best heart be true. You learn how to see the signs. Now you're going after all that shine. This brief interruption is brought to you by Sears Auto Center. Hurry in for a great deal on the all-season Super Guard 60. Prices from $17.49 to $72.99, with warranties starting at 60,000 miles. Sears Auto Center. Sale ends January 3rd. Please show for details. Hey, nose picker, flick that booger and call the Phillips file now. 916-1041. Toll free. 888-978-1041. Real Radio 104.1. There's just a few weeks left to go in the most exciting season in sports. Holiday gift season. And the place to prepare yourself is the Sports Authority. From December 8th through the 14th. 
The Sports Authority presents Nike Week, featuring a tremendous array of all things Nike. The Sports Authority is the place to go when it comes to the swoosh, with basketball shoes, cross trainers, running shoes, hiking boots, and more, and athletic apparel for just about every kind of player in every kind of sport, including the Land Jordan, a huge selection of gear designed for maximum performance, whether it's in a stadium full of fans or in your own backyard. The holidays are approaching fast, but there's still time to grab victory from the jaws of defeat. Whether you're shopping for men, women, kids, Serious athletes or weekend warriors, the Sports Authority has the gift ideas you need to make yourself this holiday season's most valuable player. Don't miss Night Week at the Sports Authority, December 8th through the 14th. Holiday shopping time is here. Prepare yourself at the Sports Authority. Traffic. A wreck on Pine Hills. It's just about a mile south. Clerk on Ocoee at North Lane. It's being wrapped up right now. This report is brought to you by General Nutrition Centers. Goldenrod southbound a little bit south of Lake Underhill. Another wreck being wrapped up. And uh, Mills a little bit south of Rollins. There's a stalled vehicle. I-4 traffic eastbound heavy at 535. Steady from Robinson to east of Lee. Slow into State Road 46. Westbound solid from east of Lee Road to Cayley. Come in today and check out the herbal selection at General Nutrition Centers. Ginseng, St. John's Wort, Ginkgo Biloba, and much more. Ask a GNC sales associate you today and save big. I'm Cody James on your only FM source for 24-hour traffic. Real Radio 104.1. This traffic report brought to you by Sports Town Billiards. Enjoy specials nightly and there's always free pool Monday through Friday from noon to four at Sports Town Billiards. Corner of Bumby and Robinson in Orlando. Real Radio 104.1 1041. That's for those of you in the metro area, long distance, toll free to the Phillips file, one triple eight nine seven eight one oh four one. A little bit of conversation about Latrell Spreewell. Horace Grant says, hey, the one year suspension is uh, too harsh when it comes to Latrell, who uh, choked his coach and then came back for a little bit more. Said maybe 10, 20 game suspension, but a uh, whole year, my goodness gracious. I don't know. What else? By the way, we still have tickets for the Christmas Carol, the real radio Christmas yep. Carol. So get off your cans, you commie bastards, and uh, help out a good cause at the Mustard Seed. Mm -hmm. We have uh, the, some of the balcony section open for the evening, evening performance show, right? on December 20th. And uh, still some very good seats open for the matinee performance on mm -hmm. Saturday afternoon. We have another rehearsal today. Some of us went over to the Annie Russell Theater to check that out today just to get a look-see of where we're going to be. This is going to be uh, pretty good, I think. I had my doubts here so. and there. I hope we can pull it off. I think we're going to give it the old college try. I think we <laughs> no. I think we're all committed. Those of us who are taking part in this in trying to do the best job we have. I we can do. I should say. I think maybe. I'm not going to fool anyone. I think maybe there might be. Well, I'm not going to say. Anything. I'm not going to put a curse. On I'm going to do it for the Gipper. Mm -hmm. Brian, huh? Go ahead, Jim. No, you go ahead. I was going to ask Otto who the Gipper was. See if he knows. Yeah, Otto. Uh, who is the Gipper? Ron Reagan. No. And how did he get that name? I don't know. Because he had a gip. I mean, a gimp. He was sick. He was in the hospital. They had to win one for the Gipper. What movie was it? Bedtime for Bonzo. No. The Longest Yard. No. <laughs> I know. I don't know. It was uh, Newt Rockney or something. Was it about him? Yes. Ooh. I believe you are correct. And who played Knut Rockney? That would be the guy who played the old man in Rocky. Burgess no. Meredith. No. 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 <laughs> I think Pat O'Brien. Old actor played it. I don't know. What was I saying? Oh, yeah, Christmas Carol. So there's seat, uh, seats available for the evening performance uh -huh. up in the balcony. Annie Russell Theater is a great little theater. It's perfect for this. Of uh, a reading of The Gift of the Magi and Charles Dickens' Christmas Carol. We've got uh, carolers from the Orlando Gay Chorus who will be performing as you arrive and, you know, during certain spots in the evening performance. It's going to be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And it all goes to benefit the mustard seed. So if you, if you don't have your tickets for the December 20th performances, uh, one in the afternoon, one in the evening, uh, come on. They don't cost much. What are they? Do you know? Uh, the, the matinee performance, yes. children are $5. Yep. Adults are 10 Correct. And then the evening performance is $15 across the board. There you go. It's going to make a nice evening or a, a nice afternoon. A couple of hours at the most, all right? Mm -hmm. We'll all be in our finest sweaters. And the seats are very comfortable. It's a nice theater. I didn't it's realize that. Theater. Was there. Yeah. 
And any any seat in there is, is very close to the stage. Yeah, it's a small, intimate theater. It's perfect for this kind of event. I think it seats 390. Pliable but firm. And, uh, yes, exactly. Like a fine buttock. <laughs> <laughs> Pliable but firm. If no other reason, you pay the money to see who's, uh, you know, who faints first or right. whose knees knock the loudest, who gets cotton mouth the most. <laughs> And what is uh, 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 God, say you, liable 554 on real radio. Hello, Robert. Go ahead. Hi, hi, Robert. You want some good advice? <laughs> sure, from you, Robert, I'll take any advice I can get. Well, it comes in the form of a song, all right? All righty, Rob. You ready? Yeah, sure. Fire away at will. Never put beans in your ear, beans in your ear, beans in your ear. Never, never, never put beans in your ear, beans in your ear, beans in your ear. Never put beans in your ear, beans in your ear, beans in your ear. Never, 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 never put beans in your ear, beans in your ear, beans in your ear. Never, 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 never put beans in your ear, beans in your ear, beans in your ear. Never, 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 never put beans in your ear, beans in your ear, beans in your ear. Never put beans in your ear. I like the melody, but I think he has to work on the lyrics a little bit. He told me that was the FSU fight song. <laughs> Where these people come from? Well, thank you, Robert. We no. appreciate that. It's one of those days, huh? Yeah, exactly. You set off any firecrackers or hand grenades, you never know what he'll start singing. It's right. 5.55 on uh, Real Radio 104.1. It's the Phillips File. Long distance, one 978 1041 Hello, Ron. Go ahead. You're on Real Radio. And it's Brain Donor Day on the Phillips File. Jeez, man, what a day. <laughs> Calls, rain, bad weather. Real, ra real wrath of God kind of stuff. Man. I wanted to comment on this whole Latrell Freewell thing. Basically, um, I wanted to say that... Um, you know, it's, it's, a lot of people seem like they want to jump on the bandwagon and just get all, all get all over this guy. But I'll tell you, when I was I was under at Duke, and our basketball coach was Mike Krzyzewski. He's a real even-tempered, nice kind of guy, and he, he never had any problems with his players. And everybody respected him. But I'll tell you something: we knew it was widely known at that time that like uh, P.J. Carlissimo, the guy who's a free wealth coach now, right. he was coaching at Seton Hall, and everybody knew that, that from interviews and whatnot that this guy was like the arch prick of the universe. And I can totally understand why a guy like Sprewell would feel like uh, doing what he did. Yeah, and feel I, like choking him. Well, we all feel like choking though? people from one time to another. Yeah, I mean, you know. No, it's not saying. justified. It's never justified unless you're in defense of your own life. But I'll tell you one thing. If he keeps bringing that out of his players, it's the, the management ought to think about getting a new coach. Has anybody, has, has this Carlissimo spoken? I mean, has he talked about this incident other than the day after it occurred? Of course he won't because he, cause he know I have a feeling. It, it's, it's nothing but a feeling or a suspicion. And he's a big reason that it happened. I mean, he just has this, this belligerent, obnoxious attitude. He's always had it. I wonder why that is when you're coaching. You know, I, I've never understood that method of coaching or that method of, of management where people do nothing but yell and scream and belittle their their employees or their workers. I, I just don't It doesn't seem to me that it works because when someone's screaming at you, you never listen to what they have to say. You just get this visceral, emotional reaction to it all. You never hear what they're saying or what they're yelling. All you know is you want to you kick their ass because they're, they're bums. Carlisimo just isn't a cool-headed leader. Yeah, just, go figure. Yeah, take it easy. All right, man. Hey, where do you go for the best-tasting bagel in Central Florida? I'll tell you, the same place you've been going for the last 20 years, Bagel King, Central Florida's hometown bagel bakery and restaurant. Bagel King is the one to call for all your holiday catering. Parties, dinners, ceremonies, Bagel King makes them tasty. Bagel King makes bagels the authentic New York way, boiled and freshly baked throughout the day in 22 varieties. Try one with one of Bagel King's delicious flavored spreads. Many choices for breakfast and lunch, including scrumptious salads and bagel sandwiches, potato knishes and other deli and bakery favorites, and baked goods as well. Crumb and cinnamon buns and those great black and white cookies. I didn't know anything about black and white cookies until a few months ago when Moira brought some in. Wonderful. How about some frugola as well? Don't have a holiday event without Bagel King Catering, 297-4100. There's a Bagel King near you in Castleberry at 436 in Howell Branch, Alafaya, and 
Ryan East Colonial, Red Bug Road, Colonial Drive in McGuire, also in Deltona and Ocala, Bagel King, New York Bagels, Boiled and Baked the Authentic New York Way. Mention Moira for extra bagels when you buy a dozen. Real Radio 104.1. It's not your radio. It really is static. Still waiting on that Christmas bonus? Well, take it from someone who knows. Don't hold your breath. In today's world of downsizing, corporate restructuring, and CEO signing bonuses that would feed the entire country of Ethiopia twice, you're trying to squeeze water out of a rock, and, well, we can't change this. We can give you some shameless self-promotional tools. Which, by the way, make great stocking stuffers. So this weekend, be the 10th person through when our talented air staff asks you to call. And we'll give you a real radio shirt, CD carrying Koozie Hat and the Cutting Edge Weekend CD from the Howard Stern Station. Hallelujah! Real Radio 104.1. The holidays are a time when families should come together. So, right now, to make it a little easier to get in touch with the people you care about, 7 Eleven's